am so lucky. I have some of the best subscribers and supporters that exist on the internet. I'm really very fortunate. And I thank all of you for being here and watching my content and supporting me over the past couple of years. Um, I especially love it when I hear from you guys with suggestions and requests. I can't always honor every single one of them, but it does really help me understand what is valuable to you, what you want to see me do, what you like hearing. And recently I got an email that made my day from a viewer who said they, you know, they love my work and they especially liked my reactions to Tom McDonald's um, videos because, you know, it's different than the usual reaction, right? I'm not a reactor to the music. I'm reacting to the content, the cultural commentary and so forth. I actually, truth be told, don't know all that much about music. It's kind of sad, really. <laughs> my kids make fun of me. Um, but this person, uh, Dallas Malloy, is a musician, voice actor, and asked me to react to one of their songs. And I was just so honored. I mean, to have somebody say, can you, this is a new recording and it's fueled by the culture wars and I want to see what your reaction is. So I'm really, I'm, I'm honored. I, I am excited to see this. I have not seen it. I have not listened to it. This is genuine and pure. So today we're going to listen to Dallas Malloy's Will You Stand Up official video, which you can find on YouTube. Here goes. I'm super excited. Let's see. Will you stand up or will you stand by? Will you speak back and call out the lies? I already love it. <laughs> Not even like even. It's just such a simple question. Will you stand up or will you stand by? Those at this point are pretty much the two options. I've said it on my channel before. Um, we have reached a point where it's not about taking sides. This isn't a political issue, you guys. This is about truth or lies. And that's exactly what the song is saying. You know, will you, will you stand up and point out the lie or lies, plural, <laughs> because there are so many. Um, I love that. It's just simple. It's a question we should all be asking ourselves. And by the way, there are lots of ways to stand up. You don't necessarily need to do what I'm doing or what Dallas is doing, but you do have to make that decision first that that's going to be who you are. Stand up or will you stand by? Will you speak back and call out the lies? As it falls apart, will you shut your eyes? Will you feel proud when you realize? Will you wake up before your demise? Will you stand up? Let me summarize. Will you stand by and let women become third class citizens? Let her sports get ruined, pretend you don't see the difference. Labeled victim or oppressor, either way's a sentence. Bullied into false beliefs, making your skin a prison. Can oh my god, this is so freaking good. <laughs> this is like so much. Um, I feel like I have to go back a little bit. Um, There's so many things. I'm going back, you guys, because... There's so much here and I'll just stop and comment on the specific lines. That's how much there is here. Okay, hang on. Will you feel proud when you realize? Will you wake up before your demise? I've been asking this question also, partly about the will you wake up before your demise, but will you be proud when you realize? Like, we tend to live in this constant state of present. I sometimes call it presentism, where you're like, what do I need to do right this second? What do I need to do right this second? And we don't do enough thinking about tomorrow and how we're going to feel, you know, a year from now. So forth. I used to do this exercise with myself when thinking about decisions, especially something big like standing up and speaking out against lies, especially if people around you don't want you to do it. For some of you, it can be a big decision. Think about how am I going to feel in 10 minutes? How am I going to feel in 10 months? How am I going to feel in 10 years? It's really important because the thing that you might feel like, okay, I feel good about it in 10 minutes, solved a quick problem, so I don't have to deal with this, you know, conflict. 10 months from now might feel, you know, not so great if things keep going down that path. But 10 years from now, I mean, really think about it. Are you gonna be proud? Especially if you don't wake up. So let's continue. Will you stand up? Let me summarize. Will you stand by and let women become third class citizens? Yeah. 
how about our Supreme Court nominee? I don't, I don't know. I'm not a biologist. And I know that's been parodied to death and memes have been made. But it's pretty important. We can't have somebody sitting on the Supreme Court adjudicating Title IX cases if they're going to tell us under oath, no less, after being nominated as the first black woman nominee. I don't know. I can't come up with a definition of woman. If, if somebody tells you, I either can't or I won't, based on the mob that I'm trying to appease, define reality. I, that person has no business judging anything from a legal sense. I wouldn't even want them judging anything like from a personal sense. I wouldn't want them in my life. Like you don't recognize reality, goodbye. So very important question. Are you going to stand by and just say that's okay? Are you going to be so wedded to your politics that are like, well, my side picked them or you know, I want a black woman on the Supreme Court or for whatever reason. I don't know why. I mean, there are other reasons not to confirm her if you want my honest opinion, but this is important. <laughs> and women's sports are effectively dead if we don't do something. And I mean, like yesterday. Our sports get ruined, pretend you don't see the difference. Labeled victim or oppressor, either way's a sentence. Bullied into false beliefs, making your skin a prison. Bullied into false beliefs make think it's living in your skin or something, a prison. And we're doing it to six-year-olds. We're starting in kindergarten. Your skin color defines you. Pick yourself out on the in this shade of Crayola crayon. You know, where do you fall on this gender line? All of these identity markers, these immutable characteristics, that does literally make you you're living in a prison. How do you break out of that? Somebody, you're externalizing your entire identity. You're not free. You're literally not free anymore. So those who don't agree destroy their life and image. Say it's all okay so you don't have to make decisions. There you go. Say it's all okay so you don't have to make decisions. You're outsourcing morality. You're outsourcing your judgment. It seems, like I said, in the next 10 minutes, oh, it's convenient or I don't want to get canceled. I want to get flame word, blah, blah, blah. Piled on, bullied on the internet, whatever the issue is, it solves your, your minute by minute problem. But do you want to live in that world ongoing? Aren't you exhausted? It's so funny that we'll always talk about, we're exhausted. We're exhausted explaining it to you. Yeah, well, it's pretty difficult to explain your little fetish and fantasy world. I live in reality. That's actually very easy to explain when you stay there. It's quite liberating when you stand up. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, it's going to be hard and people are going to hate me. No, it's actually lifting a giant burden off of you because keeping track of the lies, keeping up with the lies is exhausting. And it doesn't get any, it's not like I'll do it today and they'll let me go. No, <laughs> it just perpetuates. I know I've raised it on this channel like 17 times because it's front of mind. I'm reading it now, but Wrinkle in Time, they talk about it at the Central Central Intelligence Agency that has taken over the planet and everyone's minds. But it says, you should be happy now. I've freed you from the burden of making decisions. Who don't agree destroy their life and image Say it's all okay so you don't have to make decisions The only way out of this Find in a common thread Listen to this one thing If nothing else I said Finds its way in your heart Keep these few things in mind Stop for a minute Remember a different time Other things matter Again, it's like she packs so much stuff Into it's such a short amount of time Um, okay So Let me go back you know, re remember a different time. And I know, again, it sounds really simple, but for those of us who are over 30, let's say, maybe 40, <laughs> sorry, millennials. But I mean, you know, re even remember pre-2016, guys, come on, it was still not as crazy then. It was pretty bad, but not as bad as now. So, you know, go back to what it was like to be more or less free. You know, the social justice thing has been going a long time and all those cultural Marxism stuff has been seeping in bit by bit, but we have reached full-blown clown land. And if you have to go back to a time when it wasn't and when the clowns were still on the periphery and remember what that was like and your relationships and your life and going to work and what you felt free to say. And now think about now. Kind of different, don't you think? I'm going to go back a little bit because I feel like I missed something else. Listen to this one thing, if nothing else I said. Finds its way in your heart, keep these few things in mind. Stop for a minute, remember a different time. Other things matter. Right, other things matter. So, you know, keep this in your heart. That other things matter, remember a different time. You know, I think we've that's another problem. We've, like, 
forgot what matters and we haven't held on to our values. We haven't held tight. I think we thought they would just always stay the same. Our shared values, things that made us great as a country, as a culture of, you know, melting pot, even if we didn't get along with everyone or like everyone, if we disagreed, we were still Americans, all that kind of stuff. Like the right, right after post, you know, 9-11, where people were like, we're together, right? And I don't think we held on to that at all. It was very fleeting. It was like, oh, there it goes. <laughs> so hold on. Other things matter. Lives, dreams, it wasn't so damn and us No, a little bit Integrity, hope still existed More community, yeah, that is the answer Yes, it is Lives, dreams, when you make your identity externalized to all these other things You disappear Your individuality your life that matters you matter you own your life whoever you are and that integrity you know holding on to that not just for yourself but for others if you claim to have empathy if you claim to be a person of character and tolerance and inclusion and all those things then you're a fraud if you demand that other people like adhere to certain things and you don't recognize that's an individual person's life right there and they only get one and it's theirs, not yours to decide what they should do with it, what they should, you know, she's saying, will you stand up? She's not making a demand. People are making demands of you and people are adhering to them by staying silent and not asserting their individuality, not maintaining and defending their values and their autonomy. And this is why this is happening. It's slipping and slipping away. Community, yeah, that is the answer, oh. Dignity, yeah, division's a cancer. 100%. And again, they're doing it to kindergartners. The white kids, the children of color, the, you know, the trans kids, by the way, no such thing. And so you know, I'm going to keep saying it until I guess what? They're going to like take me off the internet. I don't know, but I'm not. It, what you have are you have confused kids, troubled kids, kids who are depressed, kids who need help. No question about it. Gender dysphoria. All these things are real and serious. But the child who has these symptoms is not a trans kid. That's an adult label that is being put on a child, usually a minor child. Stop it. Cut it out. Stop projecting your need to be part of the zeitgeist onto a minor child who's confused and desperately needs your help. It's not working out real well, okay, for their mental health and, and their physical lives and their and their physical health. So, you know, we have got take it back to finding our similarities, what makes us the same, what holds us together as a community, and what gives us dignity. And dignity, yeah, division's a cancer, no way to run a society, we all need redemption. And that's what's missing from the woke religion. No redemption, no grace. It's a cult. That's what cults are like. You're either in or you're out. And if you're out, you're like excommunicated and we ruin your life. And if you're in, you're cut off from everybody else that could possibly challenge your being in. That is not healthy. No way to run a society. We all need redemption. We the ones who make it possible. Time for reinvention. This is your turn now. Do not comply. Will you stand up or will you stand by? Will you speak backs and call out the lies? As it falls apart, will you shut your eyes? Will you feel proud when you realize? Will you wake up before your demise? Will you stand up? Let me summarize. Will you stand by and let others' rights be trampled? Look away as we are segregated and dismantled. Give Think about COVID. How many did? How many just stood by while well, people were dragged? Children were physically removed from spaces because they didn't have a mask or they didn't have a vaccine. And their neighbors not only stood by, they were cheering it on. Not just in the United States, but in Canada too. On airplanes, people like, get out, get out, like somebody was contaminated. That is the first symptom that you are leaning into authoritarianism, that you are willing to give up even your own freedom 
when you are so gleeful about someone else losing theirs, when you refuse to even acknowledge this what's happening, when you mock it, oh, your petty little freedoms and oh, you just, it's so inconvenient for you. And it's like, so today it's a mask and tomorrow it's something you care about. You're missing the point. That's the principle of the thing. And let others' rights be trampled. Look away as we are segregated and dismantled. Give up on your freedom because you took it for granted. Call it all conspiracy because you can't imagine. See all through a lens of race creating more damage. Try erasing all the men like that's an advantage. Again, yeah, that's what's been going on. Try erasing all the men. Even lesbians are hurt when that happens because what as one of my friends points out who makes the best woman trying to compete with a man like trying to like i'm 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 female but i'm gonna try to be like a man because that's what a lot of feminists were moving towards not you know we just want as women to have you know the, the same opportunities that men have to you know rise or fall or whatever and not to be treated like second class citizens it became in it not and to also be able to be feminine to not be feminine to be whatever we want okay it wasn't that it wasn't humanistic at all it was com- competitive and sort of like shoving men to that we don't need them men are rapists men are this men are that it was very down and negative on men and the problem then is <laughs> you end up with men who realize that the way to continue to dominate women is to become them put on the, the woman's suit and go into female spaces and win again. I mean, be dominant again because it's in, like you have to have balance and you're drastically upsetting the balance of nature, I think, when you you know try to make like one sex is better and all the, this and that and the other. It wasn't right if it was the patriarchy. It's not right if it's the matriarchy. It doesn't matter what it is. You don't try to erase them. It doesn't make anybody safer. It doesn't help anybody. So now you have men encroaching on women's spaces because this is what happened it's a it's sort of a a bumbling way i've explained it the friend of mine who said that to me did it a lot better but it really made sense to me it's a race creating more damage try erasing all the men like that's an advantage damn maybe i'm sorry and then there's that (laughs) and then there's that you have your sheep and you have your wolves you know, and you need, you need, and, and then hopefully you have those watchdogs. You need the watchdogs in between and very often they're men. They're always sometimes women, but very often they're men. Men do a lot of the jobs that, let's face it, I don't want to do. They're dangerous. I don't want to be a lineman and keep the power on in the middle of a storm. I don't really want to be a cop. Not to say there aren't female cops, or female firefighters. There are. But who goes and fights the wars? Really, up front. And close, you know, close and impersonal. Who protects the families and the little kids? Whatever. It's generally men. Men occupy more of the dangerous jobs um, it, it, that we need done, and I don't think we recognize that enough. It's, it's really ugly the way men are talked about, in my opinion. Advantage. Damn. Maybe you think it's too late, but it's not. That's the problem when you give a power of thought. It's all up to you now, and this is your time. Reimagine that hope and step up to the line. Other things mattered. Lives, dreams. It wasn't so them and us. No, a little bit. Integrity, hope still existed. More community. Yeah. That is the answer, oh, and dignity, yeah, division's a cancer, no way to run a society, we all need redemption, we the ones who make it possible, time for reinvention, this is your turn now, do not comply. Be fearless today, or there's nothing left if we can't speak the truth, that is our death. Time to be brave now, stand up for what is right. You can't just wait around for someone else to fight. Wow. 
be fearless today. We can't just wait around. That is so true. I will tell you, Dallas, I get up every day and I try to tell myself, be fearless. It's not hard anymore. That's why I'm trying to tell everybody watching this. Once you start doing it, it's not hard. It actually gets increasingly easy. The only hard part about it is, you know, diving in and looking at what you have to look at to tell the truth about. That's unpleasant. It's not pleasant. It's even less pleasant when you look around and realize there aren't enough people joining you and standing up. And when you further realize what she said is so true, it's all up to you. You you can. You It's like Dorothy clicking your heels together. You have the power all along. There's no instruction manual. There's no, no special announcement that's going to be made to say now, today, now, this is the time we're about to go too far. If you don't speak up now, you know, it is now. And it is literally up to you. There's nobody right now literally preventing you from doing it. But the longer you stay silent, the more likely that will occur. That's just historically true. And it will be true here too. So please go watch Dallas Malloy, Will You Stand Up? official video from the beginning all the way through so you don't have to listen to my interruptions. Um, Dallas, thank you for giving me this honor of, you know, sharing it with me and allowing me to react to it. This was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Every single bit of it. I love the music. I love the imagery. I'm a cat person. So I've got five cats. So seeing all the little kitties was wonderful. And, and the reminder about human lives and smiles. We didn't see so many smiles for the last two years. And that we're not so different. We're not so separate. And we just stop acting like we are. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you so, so, so very much. So for those of you who watched, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And um, I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video, commenting this video, sharing this video with others so they can learn more about Dallas and subscribe to her channel. And um, join my locals community at thereasonwelearn.locals.com. Have a great afternoon.